the idea for this originally came from a colleague of mine when I was working at the National Engineering Laboratory. And I have to admit, it must be at least 40 years ago. And I think at that time, there was only the sort of duet type controllers about. His original build, a lovely control at low speeds. You could actually get it pulsing, and it just took up the slack in the gear train on the local. So, as we know, a pulse width modulator controller works by keeping constant frequency but varying the pulse width. This idea was frequency modulated and you kept a constant pulse width but varied the frequency. And as we see this below, this is uh, pulse width modulation, top two lines, and the bottom was the frequency modulated one. First of all, I looked at using a wee pick of, of F75 for the locos and drew up a schematic uh, basing on a couple of functions that we'd use a potentiometer to change the frequency. And this would fit into the pick, and after applying AD, the output is usually between 0 and 255 to represent the this is the wee schematic. You can see we've got NK pot up here, feeding into an analog input. Excuse me. The, the program then pulsed one of the digital outputs. We used a MOSFET to act as a switch and pulse a 12 volt supply to the track. We change over switch here. These extra fittings here were used by debugging routines as the 675 actually doesn't have any transmit and receive uh, outputs. Now, a wee bit of the maths time period for milliseconds, thousand divided by the frequency. We cho chose a pulse rate for milliseconds so that 250 hertz, the effective voltage. Now, the space here between there and there is the time period that minus pulse width. As you can see, that changes. On the low frequency, you have a very low effective volt. Mid frequencies, you'd have six or seven volts. And when you're up at 50 hertz, you end up. And so the software was required to calculate for different frequencies. Now, during the debugging of this, um, as this pick doesn't transmit and receive pins, Chip wrote some nice little routines to help with debugging the program. I hope he's going to send them to you all in the future. But while we were developing this, the gel method has come up with a little hiccup in it. As you increase the frequency, all of a sudden, frequency drops by about 30 hertz and then carries on up again. So at the moment, that's put on the back burner. So I then decided, well, let's try an Arduino version. So I did, again, set up a schema. It's very similar to the PIC and then built up a board. A schematic, again, we've got the potentiometer here going into an analog input. We've also got the, a, I, the analog input comes all the way down and round. Did, I've just picked certain pins, they're not in any specific place. Then the digital output to drive the MOSFET, and again, and that controls the 12 volts going to That's what it looks like. Very few components. That's getting reducing down to five volts. The nano, the MOSFET, and that's the thing. David shown in one of his talks recently that PWM controllers and motors they all seem to need well operate 
at different On this particular frequency modulated one, I'm allowing it to set the minimum and maximum frequency that a loco operates. Who's not always do you want to run at 12 volts or maximum speed, very often only work go up maximum speed with about seven volts. And so the software allows for this. And this can be in this about a six minute video some of it looks as if it's repeating but videos are hard to show variations in speed so we'll move on to that and this is this is the first locomotive it's a Hornby P2 and we're running from the zero uh, so right up to 250 actually we don't get I think it would take itself to PC. You can see on the voltmeter, it's actually only going up about 10 volts there instead of the 12. And then down. You see, you get really quite good control at slow speeds. As you've noticed, though, this is on a rolling road, which is not quite the same is on the track. So to restrict the maximum speed on this, we restricted the maximum frequency. And as you see, the voltage were further than seven volts. And the speed of the local pulse is lower. So this, you're using the potentiometer now to go from zero to 60 hertz. You're not going to the full 250. Again, this is an American loco I have. Again, very nice slow speed. Slowly increasing at the maximum. This loco picks up through all the tender wheels as well. You see, we get up about 11 and a half, 12 volts. So restricting the maximum speed again by using 80 hertz. This is a Bachman Ivor going up to the 250 hertz again. I don't think any of us would run a locomotive at that. Certainly not a species. This is going to restrict the maximum speed again. I'm feeling even on this one, eight hertz is maybe a wee bit fast, it could run a wee bit slower.
Now this is a, a very old wren. Uh, and as you can guess, all four locomotives have got eight different motors in them. So it's showing that the speed controller works quite well on different types of motors. And as you can see, even for a, a city class, that's going a wee bit far. So we restricted this time to 130 hours. Again, it seems maybe too far. No. Now, as David did, he tried some of his locals with the pulse book on a bit of track with various weights. So I've now filmed this on my process built with three coaches. And this is that loco. And they say, is that too fast? I'm not sure. This is the sort of hidden part of the layout. It goes along the loft to the far end. Comes out through a wee storage yard so we can up there and bring out a different loco. Now, coming to the end, see it slowing down into the station. There's some thoughts that could make a slightly improve them. Store a number of maximum minimum frequencies in EEPROM, which you could then select switch. Output these values to an LCD screen so you knew which one you picked. I also think you might be worthwhile looking at different pulse width starting. I don't know if that's how you spell stiction, but overcome, you know, that start. Some don't want to start at zero, you know, zero to two hertz. So you can set a minimum frequency, say, of 10 hertz. When the potentiometer first comes on, it goes straight. And a wee list of this software I've used is the schematics with Piney had, slide presentation LibreOffice, the pulse drawings Libre had, and the editing video pad, but it's free with a wee bit of restriction on the, um, the, the various things you do. And that's a conclusion. Thank you.